talk a little bit about this. Law and order in prisons, of course, very important to people. We've had so many prison, prisoners being let out recently. But the UK is now considering introducing a Texas-style point system for prisoners where they get credit for good behaviour. The government will apparently be conducting a sentencing review in the coming weeks and they'll be looking at examples around the world, including in Texas. Smart sentencing has seen prisoners in the US state of Texas, not exactly known to be the most lenient one, of uh, being able to reduce their jail time by earning credit for good behaviour to take courses aimed at tackling the underlying causes of offending, drugs, alcohol, those sorts of things. So let's get the opinion of Peter Blexley, who's our crime commentator. He's a former Metropolitan Police detective, author of a number of books, and indeed uh, the host of Crime Suspects on YouTube, which is made by this company. Peter, it's great to have you back on the show. What do you make of this idea? The headline to this story should read, Beware, expensive governmental junket to Texas coming up. Because that's my fear. Fact-finding. There's going to be ministers and their civil servants getting on air, an aeroplane, probably business class, most well, also possibly first class, and flying out to Texas for something that could be dealt with by way of a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting or something like that. Look, I'm all for rehabilitation because punishment without rehabilitation is a complete waste of time. And we know that through all the short sentences that have been handed out in recent years only for people to go in, learn a bit more about crime, get be better connected with new criminal faces, come out it's and true. carry on. It's so, true. I'm all for rehabilitation, but that, generally speaking, can only happen when people get a sentence that is long enough for them to go through the rehabilitation process and for the necessary work to be in place for them to do, whether that be vocational, educational or psychological, on them, their offending, and the harms they've done. But you don't need to look to Texas to find this. There are dozens upon dozens of very capable prison governors and retired prison governors that can tell you how to do it. They just weren't able to because they didn't have the resources. Yeah, and resources are a huge issue. And also the fact that their prison system got rid of a lot of very experienced officers a few years ago. And there are a lot of young officers, often not paid a huge amount of money with a lack of experience, who are being thrust into very, very difficult situations. Um, and we have too many prisoners in the system. I just wonder whether there are some fundamental things, actually. Actually, maybe this is what, maybe what this is about is not about new schemes, Peter. It's about saying... We, we need to fix what's there already. We need to build more prison systems. We need to have more experienced officers, better people dealing with this so that wh whoever can be rehabilitated, it can be rehabilitated. And there are just some bad people who we've got to keep locked up securely and not let out after 40% of their sentences. Yeah, absolutely. I've fortunately, through the making of crime suspects, actually, have been able to meet a number of prisoners who have done very lengthy jail terms. They've spent many, many Christmas days birthdays, high days, holidays, all of that behind bars. And when you've done that for 20 years, you have that amount of time to actually look at yourself, the offending that you've committed, the damage that you've caused, the victims that you've left behind, innocent people going about their business, victimised by criminals. And when you take stock of all that, so these experienced prisoners tell me, they realise the harm they've caused. They also realise how much of their lives have been lost, stewing in their own juices in a prison cell. And so they then come out with the determination never to go back. And yeah. they contribute to society. They are reformed. They get jobs. They pay taxes. They're, they're fantastic people who have served their time. So we know, or should I say, prison governors know what works. They know the programmes. The people from education world, they know all about it. You know, so much more from people like AA who go into prisons as well and help people with alcohol and other abuse charities. They all know what can be done and how they can do it. They just need the time, the space and the resources. Some of it as well is about incentivising prisoners, but there'll be a lot of people and victims of crime who will say, hold on a second, you're actually earning credit for good behaviour. You should be good, well-behaved 
anyway and you shouldn't be have your sentence reduced simply for uh, taking courses that your heart might be in it your heart might not be in it you shouldn't be on drugs anyway they're illegal and also incredibly destructive so uh, you know this texas style point system could actually be essentially rewarding people for doing what they should be doing in the first place and that will be i would imagine a slap in the face to many people who are victims of crime yeah i don't want to see a, a, a system whereby prisoners earn discount for behaving themselves i want to see them serve their sentences i want to see them freed at the end of their sentences so that victims feel that justice has been served and are not aggrieved the prisoners have gone through that punishment process but at the end of it they come out different people rehabilitated people that is what i want to see which is why when the government has this sentencing review i want to see the abolition of so many of these short sentences to be replaced by longer sentences i hasten to add not community resolutions not restorative justice not so many of the other community orders that simply do not work and do not serve victims proper lengthy jail terms that are appropriate, that give victims some sense of justice and prisoners time to work on themselves and their offending and come out and join us in society. Let's talk about the uh, police now, because the Metropolitan Police, of which you were a member for many years, has rejected plans to introduce gender-neutral uniforms. This was a review, there was a legal ruling recognising the rights of non-binary and gender-fluid people. Uh, a, cons a consultation of 30,000 officers found they refused the possibility of unisex outfits. Instead, they've decided to stick to male and female gear, and their current supplier contract has been expanded to 2026. This seems to be a rare a rare bit of common sense from the Metropolitan Police. Peter, what do you make of it? And for those of you who can't see my face, the corners of my mouth are turning upwards because I'm talking about common sense in the Metropolitan Police. Hoorah! A chink of light, a green shoot, call it what you will, but funnily enough, they're only going to have two types of uniforms, male and female. If you identify as a male or female, go and get yourself a suitably fitted male or female uniform. Hooray, saves money, common sense wins the day. Yes, indeed, and that, that has been so rare. Um, apparently, uh, unisex trousers had left male officers in Gwent with crushed testicles, while female staff uh, complained about an uncomfortable lack of space in a crucial area. Uh, the Taxpayers Alliance says Brits will thank the Met for siding with common sense over wokery instead of wasting cash on unnecessary unisex uniforms. They can focus on their resources on tackling crime. Um, I, I mean, tackling crime? A police force? What? Steady. Steady. <laughs> we might have criminals quaking in their boots. You never if know. The, if they think the police are going to proactively go out there regain control of the streets, make the great British public feel safer as they walk to get their Sunday newspaper or do whatever they're going to do. That would be a joy. This chink of light is not a cure-all, unfortunately, when it comes to not only the Metropolitan Police, but the police services, the length and breadth of this nation, there is much work to be done to shed the liberal, fluffy, wokey nonsense that creates departments that are unnecessary, keeps police officers off the street and gives criminals a free reign. Peter, you talk an awful lot of common sense. Thank you very, very much indeed. That's Peter Blexley there, who is uh, our crime commentator. He's also an author of many books. He is the uh, host of Crime Suspects on YouTube as well. That's a series that is made by this uh, station, so thank you to him. In fact, um, Peter's book, I may or may not have bought it for uh, the birthday of uh, someone quite close to me.